All right, everyone, welcome back once again. I'm your casting host, Beef. Joining me is Snow for another episode of Random Reddit, casting your replays from reddit.com slash rstarcraft. And like I said, joining me is Snow. How are you doing, Shay? Doing fantastic. How about you? Uh, I, I am doing pretty damned well, my friend. Uh, we've been talking all day, and I just got some food. And uh, I'm pretty stuffed. Just going to do some cast. It's going to be a good time. Let's do it up. All right, so... Starting here on Daybreak, we are going to be bringing you a Terran versus Terran match. And in the bottom left-hand corner, we do have the red Terran. He is Tethys. And facing off against him, the blue trunks, DEC Lunar. Oh, here man. Here on Daybreak. What do you make of that? I, uh, I think that there's something to do with Moon and Daybreak and Night. And there could have been a joke there, but we don't have it. And we're not creative. We're not paid enough to come up with something like that. Yeah, we need the writers. Uh, so, like we said, uh, going to be starting on a, a Terran versus Terran here. Already one interesting thing to look for. Lunars is going to be walling off at the top of his ramp, whereas Tethys will not. And uh, what would you say that the advantages or disadvantages are of that? I mean, the advantages with the wall off, you can you can sort of force a scan. You can deny scan information a little bit more, but on the other hand, you know they're both very likely to be doing relatively quick expansion, so it's not... You know, it's not it's not kind of that problem if you're one basing where someone can siege outside and shoot your walls. So yeah, I would be more inclined not to bother walling in a TVT. Okay, and we do actually see a gas coming down at the 14th supply mark for Tethys, the Red Terran, and he is going to be scouting at the same time. So with a gas that early, what are the tech options that he has available? Well, I mean, there's a few ways he can go with them. He might be wanting to just get a reactor down to pump out his marines a little bit quicker. Could be a bit of a stim timing or even, uh, you know, just setting himself up to get some tanks out. Um, it'll really depend on whether or not he decides to drop an expo, which he... Mm, nope, he's definitely not. And the SCVs will meet up with one another here. Oh, oh, oh. High five and away they go. <laughs> and, like and here's what I mean. There's like testing now can't see into the base, so he has yeah. to, oh, I don't know if he has gas, I don't know what denying scouting information, the Marine's going to chase down that SCV, even with very good stutter step there, the Marine is not going to be able to catch up with him. Nope. However, on the other side over here, we do have an SCV approaching the Marine. The Marine's kind of holding down the ramp, but uh, a second Marine joins him, and that should go ahead and deny uh, decent amount of scouting information to see what he saw. He did not see the gas, but he did see the Tech Lab edition. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see if he clicked it or not to see whether it, uh, which one it was. Yeah, that's very true. I would, I would think that he probably has to assume that it was a tech lab. I wouldn't think that he would have had the gas that soon for a uh, reactor, but I'm honestly not sure. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, yeah, that's a good fair point for evaluation. Although, dropped eleven. Oh both, man, both sides are now going up with a uh, CC, and uh, as well as still no gas over here on the side of uh, Lunar, which is interesting. Yeah, both players dropping an additional two racks at this time. Uh, the expansions, once again, we need different areas. Uh, this time the safe route being taken by a red player, as well as the uh, economical route being taken by our blue player with that command center on the low ground. And uh, double gas being taken. Night scan there from Kathy. He's going to see the gas timing, going to see both of those additional racks. He's going to know exactly what's going on. By that information, he's also going to be able to decide that there is an expansion down, even though he hasn't seen it. Actually, as a point to note, Tethys is actually, uh, or excuse me, yeah, Tethys actually stopped mining gas. Um, he got 191, blew 100 on stem, and is sitting with 91. He's pulled all his workers off his refinery. Yeah, he's actually dropping an additional two racks, bringing his total up to five at this point. So this looks like we're going to be seeing a, a five racks stem timing. And yeah. this is pretty all in, like, to be honest. A, he is expanding behind this, like we said. But five racks plus stim, these marines are gonna not have any healing. Yeah, there's no, uh, <coughs> still no gas. So there, oh, one one SCV back on gas. Yeah, there's gonna be no, uh, no medevacs out here anytime soon. Yeah, and once again, another nice scan from our blue player onto our red player this time, and is going to see all five of those racks. He's gonna see the tech lab down, and he actually did see the, the SCVs go back into gas. So I'm not sure what he's gonna read from that. Uh, the five racks are gonna prompt a bunker immediately. Uh, very warranted there, but we'll see where he goes from here. Yeah, a uh, strange point on uh, Tethys is not bothered putting anything on his Zelnaga tower, as you see that Lunar has done. Um, strange on his part. 
Mm-hmm. You know, you catch a, you might catch a drop. You might catch any sort of uh, shenanigans that might be going on. And Definitely. His, with his army sitting idle anyway, no point in, no reason not to throw one over there. And so now we do see uh, a factory going down for our blue player with that double gas on the high ground. No gas is taken yet at the bottom. In addition to stem being about halfway done now, working off of those three racks, this is actually a build that we see pretty often in Terran versus Protoss and can actually be used in TVT pretty effectively as well. Uh, it's factory now going down uh, over there for Lunar, uh, and still only three SCVs mining gas for Tethys. Yeah, it's going to be really interesting to see how he goes ahead and works with this. He does have the superior marine count. Actually, the marine count is even right now, even though he's working off of five gases. So I don't think that this attack, you know, I know for a fact that this attack is not going to work. Uh, with those two bunkers, with the superior marine count uh, being in neither's favor, but the marines are going to be rallying in very quickly for our blue Terran. Yeah, and now he will have medevacs on the field and. uh about roughly a minute, a little bit less. Yeah, with those medevacs, this uh, battle is pretty secure for our blue player. And we'll see if there is going to be an actual attack here or if this is just some posturing. Oh, see, he's pulled, he's pulled his SCVs preemptively, so he's ready to do the repairing if the, the attack hits, which is definitely a wise move. See, at this point, it, will, it was kind of just some posturing. I don't know if there was a scan, but the Red Terran is going to be retreating for just right now. But at the same time, he's doing a little bit of indirect damage right now. It does have six or seven SCVs off the line that he's not mining from right now. And so, even with just this posturing, showing a little bit of aggression, even if it's fake for right now. Yeah, definitely. And one Marine is going to stim up there, going to see that there are, in fact, a lot of Marines, a lot of bunkers, and immediately he's going to wisely retreat. Yeah. No, uh... Back his base now. He has taken double gas at his main. Uh, the expansion still has no gas, um, and we're seeing as his starport and his factory are both coming up. He's building a reactor on the factory wisely, so he's going to be pumping medevacs too. And he's also beginning to get one and two upgrades. Uh, both players are actually. Yeah, both players with double uh, engineering bays, and uh, both players are pretty similar right now. Like we said, a lot faster medevacs for our blue player. He's going to have uh, two medevacs that have just popped right now, whereas the other player will not be starting medevacs, so he's going to be about four medevacs behind in total. Um, and right now we do see both of those bunkers salvage, and it looks like our blue player will be moving out right here, see what, if he can get any damage done. Actually, um, third point is, uh, Ted is actually taking his third, um, which is a pretty good move at this point in the game. They're both somewhat evenly matched in their armies. Uh, might see a poke any minute, and if he's going to throw an expansion up behind that, that's a good position to be in. And so we do see one Marine stimming forward right here, going to be able to try to take out the other Marine on that Zonanga Watchtower. But both players paying pretty good attention right there, not going to even lose that Marine. Those have to stim away, but uh, tit for tat. We do see that Lunar is going to be dropping an Armory right now, so he is planning on continuing his upgrades into 2-2 immediately, whereas Tethys has not done so. So he will not be able to continue upgrading until he gets that Armory down, which is a relatively long build time, and he has not started it yet. Yeah, it's definitely a little bit of an oversight there. And one thing to note is that uh, Lunar is operating off of five barracks right now. Uh, well, three, and then two have just gone up. There are five racks already up. Six, seven racks, actually. Uh, a total of seven racks, four Tethys at this point. But six of those racks are naked. What do you think about that as a Terran player? At this point in the game... There's, I don't know why he would leave them naked. I mean, you off right here, but there is going to be a large marine engagement. Lots of marines stimming onto the army of blue Terran. The red Terran does have supreme marine numbers great right now. concave. Excellent it's concave heavy. right there. Even though there were three times as many medevacs with not as many marines and a much better concave, like you said, the area of fire that the marines were able to take was just absolutely effective, and the red Terran takes a decisive engagement there. Sorry, I, I didn't want to cut oh. you off, but back to the naked racks. No, no problem, but yeah, certainly at this point in the game, it's not, you know, super late game and you have 77 barracks just because you're throwing them down. Uh, at this point in the game, you really do want your add-ons on them. Sure. Especially if you're turning marines like that. If you re reactor barracks, no problem. You don't need to drop a ton of barracks if you don't need them. Uh, and reactor makes that a lot easier judgment call to make. And he is actually throwing down three additional barracks, bringing his total barracks to ten with only that tech lock. And I will be right back. All right. 
Yeah, Shay did mention that he's going to go have to uh, grab his lasagna out of the oven. Guy's got to do what a guy's got to do. So appreciate him taking the time out to cast with us while he can, but he will be back in a couple of minutes. So I'll be casting the solo for the time being. And we do see that the Blue Terran has started Siege Tank production. I believe that he already had two tanks out. Siege Tank research is going to be finishing relatively soon here. Blue Terran with a nice stim right there, able to take out two medevacs. Very worthwhile as long as he has the energy to go ahead and recover the HP on those Marines, which he does. And at this point, both players do have their thirds taken. The Red Terran did have his quite a bit earlier. The fourth base of the Red Terran is going to be going up right now. Siege research about to finish for the blue player halfway done for red and uh plus three weapons already starting for our blue player here and so the blue terran is going to be quite a bit faster on these we do see that there is going to be a drop moving out right here and we will go ahead and try to watch this as it comes in around the map we do see that there is a sensor tower that has gone up going to be trying to watch for any drops along that route and the turret does spot the drop up here we'll see how the terran Red Terran is going to go ahead and react with the big stim up, going to take out that turret immediately, going to kill that uh, command center. Yeah, there's absolutely no way that thing's going to get away. And that is a huge, huge opportunity for the Blue Pro or the blue Terran to be able to catch up in this fight. Red Terran is going to be stimming a bunch of Marines in here, actually going to catch a completely full medevac right there. That is a big loss, but overall I would still say it's a better trade for the Blue Terran being able to take out that fourth. I return, I see that in my absence they have put up tons of sensor towers yeah, everywhere. three sensor towers going up for our, our Red Terran, really going to be trying to minimize the ability of the Blue Terran to move around without him noticing, and really getting into the, the information is power stance. I see a bit of a tank count over here for Blue, uh, only about five of them though. Um, he does have siege research. It's Offering up all one factory, which should explain the, the tiny count there, but now he's building a ton of barracks. Yeah, Red is actually supply blocked right now, but he's only built one tank. Siege research is done, is done, um, but he has completely stopped tank research. He didn't even move the first tank that he has. Uh, it's now moving, and finally we did see a couple of tech labs come down, so a total of four tech labs over here, uh, three tech labs on barracks for our Red player, but still seven naked racks. And that's still a little bit concerning. Oh, there we go. Reactor's coming down. Now that he's pretty much maxed out, he is going to be dropping reactors, a total of four or five of them. Five reactors. <laughs> so, oh, we see a second yeah. uh, second factory with Tech Lab going down over here for uh, DeLunar. And, and his brother's probably left a Marine up there at that base they took out earlier, which is now it's going to be killed, but he knows what's going on. It's the cheaper version of the sensor tower. <laughs> The Marine Tower. Oh man, I'd be overpowered. <laughs> <laughs> and you can run around and, and join jumping ships and things like that. Yeah, and so the Blue Terran is going to be taking his fourth down here at the four o'clock position. Probably see that morphed into a planetary fortress, so any moment here. You can tell that because it's not already in orbital. And planetary fortress has started. Oh. Both players at 200 200 right here. Uh, Going to be at plus 2 2 for our red and plus. Th two, three, four are blue, and it looks like right now they might actually be sidestepping one another. Uh, blue Terran is going to make quick work of those rocks in the middle, but the Red Terran is very aware of every move. Blue is completely in his network right now, and is going to be actually able to catch a couple of these tanks right now. A big stim on his entire army, and going to be sieging up this planetary fortress, and the planetary fortress falls very, very quickly, and it looks like right now we're going to have a base trade situation as the Blue Terran does go ahead and stem right on into the fourth base of the Red, and Red going right on into the natural. Yeah, definitely. It's sort of a interesting engagement that they both saw each other and they said, okay, well, this is going to be a wash, so let's run in. Yeah. And so right into the production buildings, I like Red's position in this a lot more. When you're able to get into the production buildings of the Terran, that is more important because right now Blue's going to have... Uh, a lot of money, but no way to spend it. He has no production anywhere other than here in the main. Whereas Red's going to be running low on money eventually, but he's still producing. Yeah, definitely. It's definitely a really, really smart move on uh, Red's part to go right into the main like that. Um. Yeah, and so he's going to take out absolutely everything in the main. Nothing has been lifted off right now. And the most important part is that the number of SCVs that made it out of the main and natural, pretty much zero. 
SCVs were pulled from the third. They are going to be congregating up here over at uh, Red's natural third. And so SCVs are very important because the more that you have, the more easily you're going to be able to reestablish yourself after a Brave Tate situation. You need to be able to get your supply depots back up so that you can start producing units. And if you can save any number of command centers, then that's ideal. Right now we do see that uh, Red is going to be floating away his buildings, but Blue already has that planetary fortress at the 4 o'clock position and is building two additional command centers and might even be able to save an orbital command over here from his natural third. Interesting enough to this one sensor tower that is still up, almost maybe a small oversight hitting that a little bit earlier, because uh, he does know basically that that entire army is still sitting in his main. Yeah, definitely. That, uh, <laughs> that red sensor tower is almost like a little bit of a middle finger saying, hey, <laughs> you might have gotten my my base, but I'm still sitting here, and the, the medevacs fly right over it, and I guess he's just going to let him have that. Down here we do see the planetary fortress is going to be going down in addition to a couple command centers, and both players are now on zero command centers, and it is going to come down to a battle of these armies. And flying a couple of medevacs right in there, that is not what you want to do. All those medevacs are forfeit. Oh, yeah, yeah no, really no chance for those. There is one burning CC over there, but it's not going to make it back anymore. It's not going to be able to drop a mule and repair itself. It's gone. And uh, Red is building a ton of CCs over there in the corner. Three of them. There's much, yeah, much both, barracks. Both players producing a lot of CCs at this point. Both players had over 4,000 minerals accumulated when the space trade did occur. The big thing that I see right now is that there are nine medevacs for Red and zero medevacs after losing those five for our blue player. Two tanks are going to siege up on the high ground here, and that is a perfect position for Red. He's going to be able to get a very Ooh, good nice. but the siege up in the background is going to be very destructive, and he's going to try to push it into this infantry line, but it's actually not going to happen. The siege tank count is just too high for our blue player. The tanks are going to be taking fire on one another, but there are five siege tanks left as opposed to the two of Red, and the infantry count is pretty much a wash on the two sides. But once again, the infantry for blue is highly damaged from stims and tank shots, whereas the infantry from red is all full life thanks, thanks to those nine medevacs. Yeah, so you have to wonder, had he not lost those three, two rather unfortunate circumstances, might have been a very different engagement there. Yeah, it's very possible. I mean, it already went pretty well for him with, with that disadvantage, let alone if he had had uh, medevacs healing him up. Yeah, definitely. And not to mention to grab sight on those high tanks. Yeah. With uh, with no medevacs, he is going to be taking permanent damage every time that he stems. So he has to really choose his engagements wisely at this this point. He's just starting to build his first racks now, so getting new medevacs out is going to take quite a while from this point. Whereas our red player has already rebuilt uh, four racks. Well, actually, a couple of those floated away and reactors starting on all those so he's going to be starting marine production as soon as he's able to get up enough supply depots like i said the the more scvs that you have to be able to produce supply depots the better at uh, this point the number of scvs that he has in total a red player is four so all of those supply depots should be being produced by those four scvs i'm not sure why he still has one mining that that should be producing scvs the entire time he has plenty of mules to do the mining that he needs. He has plenty of bank. He needs supply depots. Whereas our blue player did have seven supply depots that survived the base race. And that's yeah. actually huge. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he's building a few planters. Now, something interesting to me is that he, he's still leaving that sensor tower up. Yeah. He was sending one marine to go take it out. And he knows where it is. Oh, and actually, he is doing that now. Yep. And that will go down. The uh, middle thing you're going to be broken off here. Very, uh, very flimsy. Uh, we'll go down very quickly to that 3-3 Marine. Definitely. Simmed up 3-3 Marines do a absolute ton of damage. And here's something interesting to note. There are actually a couple of Marines that are stuck behind Red's barracks down here. Let's see if he ever does notice those. Um, the position that he's made, they're not able to get out. The reactor is obscuring. Oh, man. I'm not Obstructing. Even Obstructing. Thank you. No problem. Uh, yeah, your Red's medevac down here is huge. I'm almost surprised there's not any sort of uh, base playing around here, but I guess you can assume rather say that there is a planetary fortress anywhere where there is something to worry about. Certainly, and so it's kind of become an interesting game. These players have swapped sides on the map. Uh, both players going to be on the bases that are largely unmined. Uh, the natural third for both players. Actually, uh, the natural third for both players is going to be mining out relatively soon. Um, Red does end up taking a base at the natural... The natural... 
of blue, but there's mm, next to no minerals there. I, it's kind of interesting to me that he didn't go for maybe the positional base in the center instead. Yeah, no, that makes more sense. Um, and I mean, the other thing is, well, I mean, why is he not again sending his marines here? Take out those depots. Take out that refinery. I completely uh, agree. With uh, those depots down, that's that's what uh, sixty-five supply worth of depots, something like that. Yeah. And that's that's a lot of supply. That would put blue into the red by nearly fifty supply. Yeah, and it's very strange that he's. Uh, I mean, and plus it's giving vision to to blue. I mean, that's you know, no surprise. There's a base there, but yeah, you know, vision is vision. Certainly. And so we do bo see both players just really reestablishing themselves right now. Uh, interesting that an engineering bay is being dropped by Red right now. I don't know if that's going to be specifically for planetary fortresses or if he does need to get additional upgrades. Let's click on these uh, Marines. The Marines are 3 I, I would just... think it would be for the planetary unless he's, you know, really yeah. good at getting like, structure armor or something crazy. Um, structure armor, probably not the worst thing ever with an additional two armor that'll bring the armor of planetary fortresses all the way up to like uh five sec no four something along those yeah. lines something in that neighborhood sure yeah four uh, yeah no not a terrible idea but um it would bring it up no, to five. five yeah that's a lot of armor so even with uh plus three those marines are not going to be doing a whole lot of damage they will in fact only be doing four damage per shot having the armor <laughs> I don't know to interrupt you, but Deluna is actually going cloak banshee right now. Um, yeah. So if 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 that uh, injuring bay was for uh, a tower, that was really a remarkable read. <laughs> <laughs> Standard uh, thirty minute cloaked banshee timing. Yep. Definitely. And so we do see both players just continuing to macro back up. Very interesting that we're in the thirty minute mark, and these players are just kind of like, okay, well, I guess the first twenty five minutes of this game were a wash. We're just going to go ahead and start over again. <laughs> Yeah, definitely just a, you know, shift, uh, you know, everybody rotates a few degrees and keeps going. Yep, and so these players are actually keeping on par with each other quite well. The, note, the interesting thing is that Red does, in fact, have a large gas laid to his opponent, um, and that's not necessarily because he's mining gas and his opponent isn't. In fact, his opponent is mining more gas at him, a total of two and a third gases, as opposed to just two at this point. But the army of blue is much more gas intensive. Uh, with those banshees coming out, with cloak coming out, had to finish his plus three on his uh, marine armor, and even producing a couple of tanks at this point. We yeah, that's right. More tanks coming out, and uh, Red's actually moving out with big, really his whole force big here. Damn. Uh, whether or not he'll, he's going to do a stim, he's going to run in on this. Uh... And he's plumping up his units very much. He's going to take that down, but he took a lot of damage from the planetary fortress, and teach things aren't teaching up fast enough from blue, and red's actually going to be able to press in here and do a large amount of damage. He needs to gun down those marines and press into the tanks right now. The tanks are doing so much damage, they need to get killed, but there's no infantry left. Red has lost every single one of his combat units in that engagement. There are two siege tanks left, but they're unseaged and largely forgotten about at this point, and I think blue might have actually gotten the better end of that. Yeah, I mean, it's, again, remarkable that the, the medevacs did not play a bigger role, but I guess, again, you go and eat so much tank fire, right? Yeah, when you've got uh, tanks with plus two weapons just pounding into you from the back. Now, I mean, now this, sorry, sorry, this is the time to really see those uh, banshees. If you're going to make an aggressive play with them, this is the moment to do it. And we do have one banshee moving out. I don't know if I've lost track of any others that are going out there. And it's actually flying right over to this marine, and that's uh, maybe that. It's tipping your hand a little bit more than... Yeah, by shooting expect. that Marine, um, I think that he did dip his hand quite a bit there. And we do see, in fact, turrets are going to start coming up from our Red Terran as a result. A little bit unfortunate. We already actually do see turrets over here at the Natural. A little bit interesting that this Banshee chose to fly into this location. Um, since he can see very clearly with his supply depots that there are turrets here. Banshee going to put a couple of shots onto that command center, but not really capable of doing enough damage to make it worth it. Yes, yeah, so it's really not worth it. I need to kill the depots. Um, I don't know, maybe a stranger would be able to give uh, Red any ideas uh, by destroying his depots. But, uh, and up here... There is an engagement over here at this planetary. Yeah, in the 12 o'clock position, we did see that there was going to be a big stim and a siege up onto that planetary fortress at the 12 o'clock position. However, Red's army has been largely killed at this point. There are just a couple of Marines 
left and they're going to be oh, taking up those medevacs. Yeah, it's going down chasing these medevacs. There's even a battle mule in the in there. Yeah, there's, there's a mule in there, yeah. He's, He's getting behind mule. enemy lines. He's making sure they can't retreat. And uh, that mule actually going to be taken out by that marauder. Oh no, battle mule, oh, why? Oh, the, oh, the mule. Oh, well, uh, well, he's not going to tell his friends about that one. <laughs> Yeah, and so I think that Blue's actually in a pretty commanding lead at this point with a uh, 30 supply advantage. He does have six times as many tanks, and there's actually a load up here on the medevac. He's going to be dropping units on top of these tanks, and maybe not, and it looks like he screwed up, and just GG. And T says GG. And the GG comes out, that and that's the end of the game. So that was quite the interesting TVT here on Daybreak. What are your uh, closing thoughts here, Shay? Please. Uh, it's really just an example of uh, of where when you, when you build basically even armies of units that are you know clumped up and stimmed down shows you how important tanks really are. Uh, Red just did not build the tank army. He didn't play with that game. He said, "I'm just going to mass marines and and build my medevacs and I'll heal through it." But you know, there's a critical mass and he could not heal through it. Yeah, and one thing that I'm actually noticing right now is that he was actually producing a few tanks, but once again they were blocked in by a reactor and a missile turret. He does have two tanks over here that were just not able to be used. And if he had not forgotten the two tanks over at that, uh, the fourth base, the planetary, you know, he might've had a tank count that was significantly stronger. So just a couple of mistakes here, but uh, overall, very entertaining game. Glad that these guys submitted it. Once again, we've been casting replays from reddit.com slash rstarcraft. The link will be in the, the description of this video. Make sure to submit your replays, and we might be casting you next time. I've been your casting host, Beef. Joining me was Snow, Shay. I hope that you enjoy your lasagna, and we will catch you guys next time. Still enjoying it. <laughs>